Hello students, welcome to an academy. This is Abhishek Datta. I've done my graduation from IIT Roorkee and my MBA from IIM Indore. So in this video, we'll be starting off with a very new chapter. The name of the chapter is Structure of an Atoms. Now this is an important and a very basic chapter which will build your foundation into chemistry. So let's pay attention and begin this video with this note in mind. Hello students. Welcome to an academy once again. This video is about the subatomic particles. And this is part one of the video. Please look out for the part two after this. I'm Abhishek Datta. You already know about me. So let's begin the video. We'll be taking up two topics of discussion in this video. The first one, we will answer the question, what are subatomic particles? Okay, so subatomic particles are something which is present inside an atom and we will divide an atom into its three constituent parts and we will study about them in this section. Okay, and in the next section we will be taking up the first constituent of an atom which is an electron and we will learn how the electron was discovered. So with this let's quickly begin our first topic of discussion which is what are subatomic particles. So we already know about atoms, right? And by subatomic, we mean that the particles which are present inside the atom, they are known as subatomic particles. Now, before moving on to subatomic particles, let us revise our concepts about the atom. We already know that atoms are the very basic. They are the most fundamental building blocks of matter. If you keep on dividing any matter or any substance you take, you will finally reach at atoms. You cannot divide atoms but recent studies have shown that you can divide an atom and we'll study about the constituent parts in this section. So what is an atom? The existence of atoms has been proposed very early, right? By Greek as well as Indian philosopher. So it has been a very old concept, the concept of atoms. They were of the view that atoms are the fundamental building blocks of matter. As I said, you cannot divide matter into more substituent particles than atom. Atom is the most fundamental building block of any matter you take. They felt that the continued subdivision of matter would ultimately yield atoms, right? They would ultimately yield only atoms. If you keep on dividing any matter, you will finally arrive at atoms, which would not be further divisible, right? They were of the belief, but recent studies have shown that you can actually divide the atoms. The word atom is derived from the Greek meaning non-divisible. So something which is non-divisible, this is the meaning of the word atom in Greek. The atomic theory of matter was first proposed on a firm scientific basis by John Dalton. So he was a pioneer of the atomic structure and he had given us various theories and uh, the Dalton's theory was that he had also developed a structure of atom, right? We'll also go through that in this, in the next video, sorry. Yeah. And lastly, we see that the further experiments and observations made by scientists have established that atoms can be further divided into subatomic particles. Now, this is where the modern scientists have come up and they have established the fact that atoms can further be subdivided into subatomic particles. And there have been many subatomic particles uh, which are being discovered, but we'll study only these three, which are the most important three subatomic particles, right? So electrons, protons and neutrons. So this is a very good pictorial representation of the subatomic particles. You can see that there is a nucleus over here in the center, which constitutes the proton and the neutrons. And in the periphery, we'll find the negatively charged electrons. Okay. So electrons are negatively charged, protons are positively charged and neutrons are neutral, right? They do have mass, but they do not have any charge on them. So we'll learn about all three in detail in the forthcoming videos. So this was how subatomic particles came into being, right? So this is a good pictorial representation. Let's move on guys to the next section, which is the discovery of atom of uh, electrons, sorry. Right, so let us study about the first subatomic particle over here. We have taken electron. Now let us Think about this experiment which was conducted by Mr. Michael Faraday. He was a very good scientist and a lot of his work has resulted into the discovery of electron. 
so this is one of the experiment which michael faraday used to determine the presence of electron in an atom right guys so what is this experiment this experiment includes a cathode ray tube now this tube you can see over here this is known by the name cathode ray tube you will know why th this name over here in the next uh, few lines okay so just know that this tube is known by the name cathode ray tube and it is made up of glass so this tube over here it is made up of glass and it contains two thin pieces of metals the blue and the red these are the two pieces of metals being talked over here they are known as electrodes okay and you pass some charge through it so there is a high voltage over here you can fit a battery over here or something which can produce a high voltage and you can connect it with the anode and the cathode over here right guys so we'll have negative charge on the cathode and positive charge on the anode now the what what the observation is seen is that the electrical discharge through the gases could be observed at very low pressures and at very high voltage okay so this is the observation which was seen by mr michael faraday he observed that the electrical discharge through the gases now he filled this tube up with some gases and he could see some electrical discharge using uh, this gas over here inside the cathode ray tube and it could be observed only at very low pressures and very high voltages only when this is high and the pressure inside is very low you will see that there is a electrical discharge okay when sufficiently high voltage is applied across the electrodes as i said over here current starts flowing through a stream of particles moving in the tube from the negative electrode which is the cathode to the positive electrode anode so there is an electrical discharge in this direction whenever we have high voltage right and very low pressures okay so these were called the cathode rays or the cathode ray particles now you know why this is called a cathode ray tube because the particles are originating from the cathode and they are moving towards the anode hence these rays the rays inside they are known by the name cathode rays because of their source of origination which is the cathode so from negative to positive there is a flow of electrical discharge right guys and these rays are known by the name cathode rays now what is so special about these cathode rays let us look in the next slide so say suppose you modify this apparatus into this apparatus what is the difference guys the difference is in the anode now rest apart everything is same say suppose you take an anode and perforate that anode and put some coating material in the end this can be a fluorescent coating why are we doing this guys because we want to know the presence of this ray over here so if these rays are electrically charged over here if these rays have some electrical charge on them there will be some effect on this fluorescent coating okay so let us look what michael faraday found out after he modified this apparatus into this one so when we modify with a perforated anode which is seen over here so when these rays after passing through the anode so it has crossed from here from red to blue and it is going forward towards the end now to the fluorescent coating side they strike the zinc sulfide coating and a bright spot on the coating is observed right so there is a bright spot which is observed over here when whenever a ray hits that coating and the same thing happens in a television set so in a television set which were the uh, very old television sets not the lcds which you see nowadays they worked on the same principle that there were some cathode rays hitting the screen and whenever the rays hit the screen that spot illuminated so definitely these had some electrical charge on them okay so this is known by this experiment over here let's read forward so what are the observations which were made by faraday okay so the results of these experiments are summarized below the first point is that the cathode rays they start from the cathode and move towards the anode as we said okay these rays themselves are not visible but their behavior can be observed with the help of certain kind of materials fluorescent or phosphorescent okay guys so these rays themselves they are not visible you cannot see them with your bare eyes but their behavior can be observed with the help of certain kind of materials so what kind of materials are we talking about fluorescent or phosphorescent phosphorescent okay guys which glow when hit by them 
Thirdly, we see in the absence of electrical or magnetic field, these rays travel in straight lines. Okay, so if there is no interference of any electrical or magnetic field, they behave normally and they travel in straight lines. But in the presence of electrical or magnetic field, now when there is some interference because of the electrical or magnetic field which is induced externally and it is not produced internally, it has been introduced externally into the system, the behavior of these cathode rays, cathode rays are similar to that expected from negatively charged particles. Right guys, so what is the property of negatively charged particles? If you bring a negative charge in front of a negative charge, both will repel, right? This is the law. So opposite signs, they attract and the same uh, charges, they repel each other, okay? So whenever we have the electrical or magnetic field which is induced externally, the behavior of these cathode rays, they are similar to that of a negatively charged particle. Whenever you bring external negative charge, these cathode rays, they ripple, okay? Suggesting that the cathode rays consists of negatively charged particles, guys, and these particles are called electrons. So where are these electrons generating from? They are generating from the cathode and moving towards the anode in the presence of very high voltage and low pressure gases, okay? And these particles are known as electrons. The characteristics of cathode rays, which are electrons, they do not depend upon the material of electrodes. Whatever material you of electrode that you use, it does not affect the production of these electrons, right guys? And the nature of the gas as well. So whatever be the electrode and whatever be the nature of the gas, electrons will definitely be produced and cathode rays were observed for sure. Okay, thus we can conclude the electrons are the basic constituents of all the atoms guys. Right? So we can conclude that electrons are the basic constituents of all uh, of all atoms. So irrespective of the material of the anode and the gases, we see electrons are being produced and this is how the discovery of electrons came into being. So this was the introduction to subatomic particles guys. And we looked at the first subatomic particle which is electrons. In the next video, we'll look at the uh, some major developments into the calculations of electrons, the mass and the charge on electrons, as well as the discovery of protons and neutrons as well. Okay guys, thank you, take care and bye-bye.